It's good to see so many faces. Some are maybe new, but the most are the usual suspects. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all your coming. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our ibadah in the month of Ramadan. It's nice to see so many young people, but I was hoping it would get even more young people. I'm sure next week you can all bring a friend along with each as well. But maybe that's the only friends you have. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure you will have more friends. So, inshallah, next week, everyone can try to bring along two of the new friends more, inshallah, so we can have this room full. Inshallah, there will also be some refreshments as well. So, inshallah, we have two things today planned. One is we have one of our students who so inshallah give us a short reminder. And after that, our other students have prepared a quiz for this one. So you all enjoy using phones, so inshallah we get to use it today as well in the quiz. So inshallah students. <laughs> Increasing your recitation of the Quran and increasing your ibadah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. I want to talk today about a da'a that isn't only important in our day to day life, but also especially so in Ramadan. Al du'a al mu'min al ibadah. Supplication, du'a is the essence of worship. We start by saying that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given special, exceptional oratorical skills. His words were very simple and eloquent, but they were able to convey libraries and libraries of wisdom and truth. The Prophet Sallallahu himself said, having said the Dwaniya Kadis, this means precise language that is able to convey a multitude of meanings. This indeed itself is a Dwaniya Kadi, and there is a much greater meaning behind this Kisnali. So let's break it down, and inshallah we'll be able to get advice and knowledge, not just for Ramadan, but for every single day of our lives. Let's start by asking, what is the purpose of du'a? Du'a is the gateway to many blessings. When we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for cure for illness, or we ask for an increase in knowledge, we want to supplicate for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one realizes that Allah and Allah alone can fulfill one's needs. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to cure illnesses and increase one's knowledge. Another purpose of du'a is to humble ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another view, the Prophet Sallallahu says, Modesty is a branch of faith. This indeed refers to modesty and humility to be one of the most important aspects of faith. Dua enables us to think of the overwhelming and numerous blessings that we have from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and it slowly allows us to incorporate this into our daily lives. We need to shy of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and be thinking of Allah the next time we have the opportunity to sin. In the Quran, chapter 40, verse 60, from this, we can know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always listening and will always respond to us. So let's look at the results of our du'a. First, Allah can grant us what we ask for straight away. Second, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can grant us at a later point in this life. Or thirdly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you in the hereafter. On the day of the Yama, when we see the reward of our, our, our unaccepted du'a, we will have wished that none of our du'a will have been accepted in this life. SubhanAllah. We think that Allah has accepted my du'a, I must have not asked Allah for I might have gone to the good. 
the road which you built for this path of infinite wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That what Allah has ordained, this is what is best for us. Now we all know about Allah, his benefits and purpose and role in our life. We can have a look at how to perform the Lord, his attributes, and how we can get the most out of it. Firstly, we should be in the same way. This allows us not only to have a clear mind, but also, also to be pure in front of the Lord of the Lords. We should then face the Qibla and sit in Tashahud or be in Sajra. This allows us to be humble in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In making dua, we should also cry, linking back to humility in front of Allah. To start, praise Allah and pay close attention to the words we use. Then, send the rule upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now ask Allah for anything you want. You should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to fulfill all our needs and that nothing is difficult for him. You should always ask for humility, but also with emphasis and affirmation. Once we have asked for ourselves, we should ask others. Finally, we finish off by sending the words of the Lord upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And finally, that we should Allah. Whenever Ramadan comes, we should always strive to be better than the last. If we finish the recitation of Quran one time, then we should try to be true of the previous time. Whoever wants to be better than the last time, we should try to, should strive to be more than this time. I hope, inshallah, that this helps you to understand a bit more about your brother, communication with the Lord of the Universe through Dua, and ultimately, that helps you to get a bit more of Ramadan this time around. Jazakallah. MashaAllah, very, very inspiring words. As you said before, that the hadith recited that dua mukul ibad. That the dua is the essence of worship. So it's the head in some hadith that any ibadah we do, there is always a dua to call. It's always calling onto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dua is a very, very important aspect of each and every ibadah. So before we start in ibadah, we say Bismillah in the name of Allah. That's a dua in itself. And after we complete, we say Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah. And that's a dua in itself. And that's the minimum that we do before and after each action. But even the salah that we recite in a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that the dua which is recited after salah are accepted. When we go for umrah or hajj, when you are doing tawaf around the Kaaba, we are in Safarawa, we are in Muzdalifa, we are in Arafah, wherever we are, throughout the journey of umrah or hajj, we are involved in dua. When we wake up in the morning, we start with dua. When we go to sleep, we end with dua. So every moment, every aspect of our life, dua is an integral part of it. And then you have the dua where you actually sit in a certain position, at a certain time, where you humble yourself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the month of Ramadan, we all know that it is closely attached to dua. In a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu says that the dua of a fasting person is not rejected. Allah doesn't say it is accepted. Allah says it is not rejected. So meaning that it will definitely be accepted. And then he mentioned three types. He said that there are some du'as that are accepted straight away. When you raise your hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah accepts it. And there are also moments when you, you make dua, but you're not raising your hand, that's fine, it's not good. You are walking, you are doing something, and a dua comes from your heart. Do it. Dua, there are etiquettes for dua, but that's not a limit for it. You can do dua whenever you want, wherever you are. So the first thing is that when you make dua, it is accepted straight away. The second one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may not give you what you have requested straight away, but rather after some time. When Allah feels it is appropriate for you, it is good for you, in Allah's infinite wisdom. Many times we, we expect that if I ask something, I should get it straight away. Now we become very demanding. We have this sense of 
uh, expectation in everything. That everyone should do everything for us, everything should happen for us. Yes? And that's not a good way of living our life. When we live our life expecting, you know, taking things for granted, then we will never ever work hard. We we'll always rely on others to do things for us. But rather, we need to do things for ourselves. We need to do things for our ourselves. So, whenever we make dua to Allah, you are begging and you are humbling yourself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who is the giver. He can give whatever he wants. However much he wants. Sometimes you ask for one thing, but you get something else. In the Quran, Allah said, sometimes you think something is good for you, but it's not. Sometimes you think this is not good for me, but it actually is. So Allah is all wise. When you ask, Allah will give you straight away, or He will give you at a later time when He feels it's appropriate for us. And the third thing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you the reward of whatever you have asked for in the Akhirah. So in the dunya you don't get anything. Allah will not give you what you ask for. But the hadith mentions that on the day of Qiyamah when you will see all the reward that Allah has given you for your supplications, for your dua, then you will wish, said, I wish not even one of my duas was accepted in this world so that I will have got all the reward of everything in the other. But that doesn't mean that we don't make dua. We have to make dua. Allah says, مَنْ لَمْ يَسْأَلِ اللَّهِ That the one who does not ask Allah, Allah becomes angry. And if I go to Hamza and say, Hamza, give me something. One day he will give me. Next day, he will give me. Third day, he will be like, what's this guy out here, man? He won't even open the door. Or he'll act like he doesn't know me anymore. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the giver. He loves it when we ask for it. He loves it when we humble ourselves in front of him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes angry if we don't ask for it. Allah says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَائِمُ When my servant asks me, then, فَإِنِّي قَائِمُ عَلِمُ اللَّهِ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ I accept the dua of a person whenever he supplicates. Whenever he calls out to Allah, Allah will answer. Allah says, They should ask for me and believe in me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to turn. So these are some of the etiquettes regarding dua. In the month of Ramadan, we should involve ourselves in dua as much as we can. And we all wake up for suhoor. Yes or no? Is there anyone who wake up for suhoor? We all wake up. Yes? I know it is quite difficult now. The previous years, we used to say it's long fasting and short nights. We used to grumble a bit. But now that our suhoor is right in the middle of the night, three o'clock, I think we find it even more harder now. And we wish it for those days were better. We would come for Asal, Maghri, Isha, suhoor, and then go home. Huh? But this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you look at it, the month of Ramadan is amazing. We usually associate fasting with tiredness or I can't do much. But in fact, when we fast, we do a lot more. We have more energy. Now many students have exams as well. So the whole thing about the cumulus fast is talking about exam and fasting. And some fatwa has come that, you know, you don't have to fast if you have exam. There's no need for any of that. Why? Because our iman is very strong. This fasting that we do, who is it for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So because we did it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no ikhlas in work with it. So Allah's help will come even more. Allah's help will come even more. People say, I have exam. I don't have time for Quran. I have an exam. How can I pray my salah? That these are the things which will help you succeed in this dunya and the akhirah. So the real exam is the exam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The real test is the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
All these tests and exams in the world, they are just there for this worldly thing. They will benefit you to a certain extent. But not when we sacrifice our actual commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot sacrifice our deen for all these things. So when we fast, we have more energy. So in Ramadan, what do we do? We wake up first of And we wake up in the morning, we go to school or university to work. We come back in the evening. And then in school as well, wherever we are, you know, dhikr is constant on our time. We are aware Allah is watching us. So we are more careful of our actions. And we recite more Quran as well. And then at night, when we feel we are tired, what do we do? We actually stand up for 20 rakat and we hear the whole Quran throughout the whole month. So we end up doing a lot more in the month of Ramadan. So how can it be that Ramadan is a month where we are more tired? We sleep less, we eat less, we drink less, we talk less, we do a lot more in Ramadan. So we are more productive in the month of Ramadan than outside Ramadan. So, we, so when we wake up for the Hajj, that's the time in the Hadith mentions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down and He said, Is there anyone who is asking from me and I will give him? Who is anyone seeking forgiveness that I can forgive them? This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most kind. He is ready to give. Is there anyone who is there to take? The month of Ramadan is there for us to take from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let it not be that Allah is giving us and we don't take. So we will be the ones who are the worst of people, the least successful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Be ready. So we have a quiz. You need to tell your phone. Yes. yes. So all of you take your phone down. And when they have to join.
What was the name of the father of Ibrahim <laughs> Muhammad Azhar or Saleh? Oh, 
That was hard. If you can, I know you are excited, mashallah. Just take it easy. So, the name of the father of Ibrahim Ali Salam was Alta. And he was an idol worshiper. He used to make idols. He never converted to Islam. And there are many amazing conversations in the Quran. The way Ibrahim Ali Salam speaks to his father. Inshallah, one day we can get into it as well. Yesterday and today, we were discussing about parents after Isha. So in this conversation, despite Ibrahim Salam's father being a disbeliever, worshipping idols, he still says, Ya Abati. Ya Abati means, Oh my beloved father. Who was the first prophet? Easy one. Very easy. Why did the brother of Salaam throw him in a well? Jealousy, oh, hatred, because he was more handsome than them. <laughs> what other son, apart from Salih Salam, was most dear to Ya'qub Ali Salam? Bin Yameen, Ibrahim, or Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't share the answers. Try and be honest. Sinyami. <laughs> Amazing story regarding him. Oh, <laughs> How many prophets are mentioned in the Quran? 16, 25, or 35? Why did it come to after you were lucky? 25. 25 prophets are mentioned in the Quran. In total, they are over a hundred thousand prophets. In the Quran, 25 are mentioned. Who authored the book Qasasul Nabihid stories of the prophets? And that, that's more of a, a student of knowledge question. It's a very, very famous book used by the student of knowledge, those who learn Arabic. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Sheikh Abu Hassan Ali Dabi. Now, one second. Can I have? Okay. Sheikh Abu Hassan. Ali Nandimahtullah was a very, very great scholar. Very, very great scholar. He was such a great scholar that he was one of the few people in the history of the Haramain where his janaza was recited in his absence in both the Harams, in Mecca and Madin. He was universally accepted. Amazing work he has done. He had profound insight and many of the advices that he has given the applicable even today as well. So we should try and make a note of this name and read a bit of his life, inshallah. It's very, very inspiring. So that's it. Now we've got um, the remote thinking okay. part of this. That's the next category now. Oh, 
Um, there's a there's a um a new call you have to join. So same thing. Yes. Oh, you have to go on the website again and then you call. New code, yeah. Because you should think there's a new code in our own. Can we see the results of the of the previous ones? So we who got the most? So in the first no, no. which participant got the most? No, we don't know that. Um, we have no. Oh, no, so 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 yeah. It doesn't say who got the most. <laughs> But it just helps me. That's what because remember we told me that Okay, now we have the next one. Go on again and use another code five seven five seven seven two seven two. The leader was removed by mistake, so there's no leader for this week. But inshallah next time we'll give the invite. So, ready? So you have to go again on menti.com and use the code 57577273. Bismillah. <laughs> What was one of the other books that Imam Bukhari compiled apart from his Sahih Bukhari? Mishkar al Masabir, Adab al Mufar, or Mutaf al Kuhi? This is again for students of knowledge, but also it's a. Mishkar al Masabir is actually. A collection of a hadith from all the different books of hadith. And Adab al Mufad is a compilation by Imam Bukhari, but he speaks about the etiquettes, mannerisms. What was the name of the person who discovered Al Jabra? Ibn al Haytham, Al Safa, or? Why is Surah Nisa about? So I decide. So I Who was the third Khalifa? Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Radiallahu Anhu, and Mahi. Who was the Abu Bakr was the first, Umar was the second, and Uthman was the third Khalifa. Who was the third Khalifa?
So complete the hadith. It is a good deed to meet your Muslim brother with. So how should we meet them? Should we meet them cheerfully with salah or with kindness? The hadith mentioned the word in Balkin. So the hadith mentioned. Whenever salam is there, the first word is there, salam, but how should you meet them? Always meet them cheerfully. The Hadith says, we watch him with a smiling, cheerful face. <laughs> What is the name of the place where souls are kept before the Abun? Which Alam is it? Before the Abun. Parawiyin, the university. Baytul Hikmah was a house of wisdoms in the uh, on the Khilafat and Alam al Allah is where our souls are kept before they are put into our bodies. So before we are born, they fall in Alam al Allah. Who was the founder of the University of Parawihi? Fatima al Bihari, Abbas ibn Abbas, or Ibn Sina? It was a lady by the name of Fatima al Bihari. She was from North Africa, the North Africa region, and that was the one of the first universities we were set up by women. So we can see, mashallah, the women were far ahead in knowledge. Even today, in England, we have the alums for girls. There was once a presentation in Maktoum regarding education for girls. And one of the female scholars, she gave a presentation on the girls' dialogue in Bradford. And she explained how the system of education is, how they are looked after. And that got the most amount of feedback. Why? Because the way we have provided education for women in Islam. But in today's current time as well, it's a safe space for them where they can learn the Islam and education in the sciences of this world as well. Unless someone wants to pay him on ninety-nine. Okay. Mashallah, it was a good uh, effort from the students that we've been preparing for the last few days trying to come up with it. If anyone has better ideas, maybe something else where they can use and it can show the result of what everything is feedback to uh, the media itself. Okay. Um, I was thinking that while we're waiting for the refreshments to come, because it's the night of Ramadan and the hadith of Rasulullah that on the day of Qiyamah, the fast will intercede to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran we also intercede to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on our behalf. So I was thinking if for the next 15 minutes, 15 okay? 
if we can all sit individually, no one sit in groups, no one sit with your friend. Everyone sit by themselves, think of it as uh, social distancing, two meters. And everyone sit and inshallah read Quran for the next 15 minutes. So every letter we recite, we get reward multiplied by 10. Every half we recite, multiplied by 10. And the month of Ramadan, being night as well, then we get more reward. And those who want to stand and do Qiyam and recite Quran in Qiyam, then they can do so as well. So for the next 15 minutes, if we can all either read Quran in Qiyam in Salah or sit by ourselves and read Quran in Shabbat. Is that okay? So we try and make it a bit more practical and more productive in Shabbat. Everyone, please take your Quran and let's start.